Okay, uh, good, good afternoon. I'm uh, Federica and uh, my teammates are uh, Ambra, Emanuela, Saveria and uh, Simo that unfortunately we can't uh, participate at uh, this meeting. Uh, our project concerns the replacement of uh, copper with aluminum in uh, battery packs and uh, bus bars. Uh, electric uh, cars are uh, today a uh, strong expanding uh, market thanks to their efficiency and uh, saving of uh, fossil fuel. Uh, electric motors are made by a number of uh, modules that are uh, connected through uh, bus bars. Uh, bus bars are uh, entirely made by copper because it's a good uh, conductor, but it's uh, quite expensive and uh, heavy. Uh, our idea is uh, to replace the central part of uh, bus bar from uh, co copper to aluminum, and, uh, but it's uh, necessary to maintain the copper contacts and join the two parts uh, by uh, welding. Um, our project has some advantages uh, like uh, with reduction, cost reduction, good uh, efficiency, and uh, recycle uh, opportunities. Uh, the project goals is uh, to find the optimal design to have a uh, bimaterial, copper, and uh, aluminum uh, bus bars. Now my teammate illustrate the uh, choice of material. Thank you. Uh, now let's take a look at what are the main uh, key points related to the material choice. The first point is related to the weight uh, saving. Even if a bus bar is uh, small and light compared to the overall weight of uh, a vehicle, it is still an advantage to choose a B-material bus bar because it would be lighter. On the right, you can find a simple example, and a B-material bus bar is lighter even if to ensure the same conductance, the aluminum part must be thicker. Then we try to focus the, on the cost. Under the point of view of the process, we can say that in general, to manufacture aluminum is easier compared to copper for several reasons, because aluminum has a lower strength and this would be better for the molding processes, but it has also lower melting point and it's better for the casting processes. Therefore, we can say that in general, it's easier to manufacture aluminum and therefore it will require less energy. And this would be, would be the first cost reduction. Then for what concerns the raw materials, even if prices can change from place to place, it is well known that in general, copper is uh, way more expensive than aluminum, especially if we consider to use uh, recycled aluminum or secondary aluminum. The third point is related to the stock and insurance cost, because this cost depends on the value of the good. And uh, as already said, uh, aluminum is cheaper, therefore uh, um, this would be another cost reduction. Then we try to focus on what is the carbon footprint and the sustainability of our project. First of all, as already said, uh, to manufacture aluminum is easier and it requires less energy. And uh, this means not only a cost reduction, but also a carbon footprint reduction. In addition, we are considering to use secondary aluminum, recycled aluminum, and this would be a really sustainable choice. But even using primary aluminum, now it is possible to recycle aluminum with some processes that are, that are quite efficient. Therefore, we think that uh, our product life cycle uh, could be really sustainable and uh, environmental friendly. The last point regards some design issues related to the material choice. The first one is related to the thermal expansion because uh, in a battery, there can be a temperature increase uh, without control uh, as a consequence of, of uh, shortcut episodes or um, floating current, for example. Therefore, if the temperature increase without control, it would be more difficult to control the expansion of the material. And we have further problems because uh, uh, copper and aluminum has different, uh, have different uh, expansion uh, um, constant. So this is a problem related especially to how we decide to fix the bus bar to the battery because there must be a gap to allow the expansion and to avoid the buckling effect, for example. The last point is related to the oxidation layer because both material, both aluminum and copper present an oxide layer, but while the copper layer, the copper oxide is still conductive, 
the um, aluminum oxide is not conductive at all, and therefore this could affect the functionality of the bus bar. This is the main reason why we decide to maintain the extremity of the bus bar in uh, copper. So this was a short overview of what are the main consequences of this choice of material. There are some undeniable advantages, but also some big issues that need uh, further discussions. Thanks. Thank you, Saverio. And um, as far as concern, the practical aspects, so the, te the technical feasibility of these components, we have some design constraints. So first of all, we have to couple uh, two dissimilar materials, two, two metals, which are copper and aluminum, we need to respect a certain geometry, so we are talking about uh, low thicknesses, and but uh, the, the type of joint is a butt joint. The, during the coupling, the electrical conductivity uh, needs uh, to be um, uh, to be kept, so the performances uh, should be guaranteed. Uh, so, for example, there, there we, we should consider that we can have different material sections and there might be also some intermetallic compounds in the, um, in the coupling, uh, in the coupled zone. And of course, uh, last but not least, we need to guarantee uh, the, the structural integrity in, of the contact. To do this, um, we have investigated some advantages and disadvantages of um, uh, welding processes. So welding processes can be um, can be uh, divided into groups. We can have fusion welding and solid state welding. So typically uh, fusion welding is more employed for um, coupling similar metals and there might be some uh, higher global deformations due to the cooling and there, there might be also an uncontrolled solidifi solidification which leads to uh, the formation of intermetallics. Uh, which is not so, which is not well controlled. Uh, instead, we have solid state welding, which is more suitable for coupling the similar materials such as copper and aluminum. Aluminum. Uh, it is a process that can be automated. It doesn't show a large heat affected zone, and that means that the strength is less compromised. And uh, most important is that the material does not uh, melt. So we uh, choose eventually the solid state welding process. And among all the processes uh, at solid state, we can see uh, we, we have investigated friction steel welding, hybrid bonding, and ultrasonic welding. Friction steel welding uh, is probably the most uh, common, the most used. Uh, it involves um, heat generated by frictions. Uh, it, is, uh, it is suitable and easy to apply to flat plates in a, a large range of um, thicknesses. Um, the materials after the cooling doesn't show a high porosity and the temperatures involved in the process are, uh, are quite, uh, quite small, that, which means that also the deformation at the end, the, the residual deformation uh, are not high. Then we have hybrid bonding, which is a bit more flexible in terms of geometries, but um, it's, it is still to be fully developed for industrial applications. And at the end, we have also ultrasonic welding, which is basically uh, a bit more expensive than the other two processes. So we eventually choose the friction steel welding as the best option for our project. Um, as far as concern, uh, the cost. So this slide, this slide is a part of the budget plan. So it, it's here because we it's related to the process, uh, but it will be also part of the budget plan that we will see on the next slide. So we have some inputs, as I said, butt joints. Uh, the thickness of the base plates can vary from one to two millimeters, and we assume one welding bus. So we can have some variable power cost. Uh, some shielding gas costs and labor costs and machinery costs. So this is a rough estimation. And uh, at the end, we have the total cost per joint that can reach uh, roughly 0 0.3 uh, euros. So as I said, now we go to the, to the part um, that involves the, 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 the resources flow involved in this problem. Yeah, so let's have a look to the main partners and stakeholders that may be involved. 
So first of all, all the idea must be studied and developed uh, deeper by the academical researchers from uh, both the University of Padova and NTNU, who will design, characterize and test the buzzwords. Then uh, will be the turn of the raw material suppliers that in our case, uh, they will be one copper producer and hydro as a high quality recycled uh, aluminum supplier. And then these raw materials are then purchased to, by a manufacturing company, which will transform the raw material uh, into our bus bars uh, by means of uh, welding, machining, coating, and of course, adapting the product to the specific final application, uh, like by varying sizes, the sizes of the holes, and, and etc. So then once uh, the component is manufactured, uh, it can be sold to the battery industry where the bus bars are assembled uh, on the battery pack uh, and then they can be quality controlled. Uh, the final user could be any kind of industry uh, which could heavily employ battery packs. For instance, all kinds of uh, vehicles producers such as cars, ships, uh, ferries, and so on. And as last step, uh, at the end of its life, the product uh, is disposed and is recycled, and in turn, goes back to hydro and a potential recycled copper supplier. So now we can talk about a bit, a bit about costs. So we consider that uh, three years may be the necessary period of time for research and development uh, of this project. We consider to involve one PhD student employed on structure, pro structural properties uh, investigations and one more experienced, per experienced person uh, such as a postdoc for uh, the mechanics modeling part for the supervision and so on. So the cost of the researchers includes also the tests and we plan to have tensile, fatigue, conductivity, corrosion and creep tests. The type uh, of specimens necessary for the comparison are five. So three of them are single materials, one copper and two different uh, aluminum alloys and uh, other two with the aluminum uh, alloys and copper combined. Uh, the latter has to be manufactured uh, with the welding process suggested. So we put also an estimation of the process costs. So to have a general overview, we can look at the pie chart here, uh, where we can see that the major part of the costs is covered by R&D costs. And if we then take a look at the smallest piece, uh, we can see that the purchase of the raw materials is the bigger expense, uh, especially for the amount of copper that is involved. So going on with the risk factors, considering them, uh, that maybe, yeah, we came up with some points which are actually more challenges rather than effective uh, risks. Uh, in increasing of order, uh, of risk level, the problems may be related to structural integrity, uh, which may be affected or decreased. And mm, likewise, the electrical conductivity may be reduced. Uh, of course, coupling the similar materials may lead to a more difficult recycling pro process due to their decoupling. And above all, uh, since we are introducing an additional step on the manufacturing process, the welding, uh, the process costs uh, will, will grow. So, uh, in conclusion? So, in conclusion, uh, why choose us? First of all, uh, this, process, this uh, project relies uh, on a research field uh, which potentially can gather different, different actors. So, you can go on, okay, yes. Different actors uh, from the automotive, but also to the battery recycling industries. Second, it's, uh, it's a long term business opportunity uh, for the close future. So, we're, we are currently seeing that a lot of applications are being replaced by electric devices. First of all, 
among all the electric vehicles industry, which is not only involving cars, but also, for example, boats and ferries. Third, this uh, is, a, an inno is a innovative. So the technical solution to the problem of coupling the similar material can be applied in um, a large variety of different uh, applications, not only in bus bars. I think to I think about metal wires, for example. For fourth, it is environmental friendly and sustainable. Is a green solution because. Uh, uh, increases uh, not only the recyclability of, uh, of the components, but uh, also because uh, uh, also recycled aluminum is uh, suitable and can be employed. Uh, so in conclusion, the risk factors that we saw during this presentation uh, should probably be considered more as a challenges that, can, that are manageable in the next future. And we can say that it's, it's feasible, it's not, uh, it's not a dream. So thanks for your attention. And we are here if you have some questions.